I believe solely in my brand. I believe it's it's the best and, and I'm gonna live by that. It gives me the passion and the drive. I live, eat, sleep, revive. Hi, I'm Angus and this is Nina, founder of the Revive Lab. The Revive Lab is South Africa's first science-backed and clinically trialed ingestible beauty brand. Nina is more than an entrepreneur. She is a role model, fitness and lifestyle influencer, studious learner, and above all else, she is a mother. In this episode, we discuss how her business idea came about, why research is key to any brand's success, why every entrepreneur needs a support system, finding that work-life balance to raise a family and run a business, overcoming mom guilt, and understanding how social media can build a genuine community that cares. We'll jump into the conversation where Nina shares the beginning of her entrepreneurial journey, the birth of her firstborn, Gabby, and the health complications that ultimately led to the development of the Revive Lab. So you've obviously st you studied all these things. It sounds like you're quite academic about it. But then when did you decide to turn that knowledge into a business? Like where did that impetus come for you? So I would say after my first pregnancy, okay. um, I gave birth to Gabby in 2016. Um, and that was really, I think what ignited Revive was the fact that I was, even with all the knowledge that I had, I was not prepared for what was coming. Um, so I suffered severely from postpartum hair loss, um, which was instant after having Gabby. And I had tried everything, every skin, hair, nail supplement there was locally. I was importing anything and everything that I could get. My, ho my whole house turned into a pharmacy. Sure. But nothing gave me the results that I wanted to see or, you know, expected. All these, it was just empty promises. Mm. And um, funny enough, a friend of mine from abroad um, said to me, listen, I'm on this amazing supplement and you should give it a go. My hair is thriving on it. My skin's thriving on it. And I was like, well, what is it? And she introduced me to marine collagen. So um, I had nothing to lose and I asked her to send me some. So it was an Australian brand yeah. and um, she sent me some from abroad. And like I said, I mean, I looked at it and I was like, it's a white powder. Like, what is this white powder what, what gonna can actually, actually do? do? Yeah. And um, started it because as I said, I mean, I tried everything else and I had nothing to lose. So tried it out and within four weeks, there was a significant reduction in the amount of hair that I was losing. And that was probably the turning point. I wanted to know more about this product. Um, and if it worked for me, who else could and it help? I, correct, who else could it help? And I think ultimately I've always been a pe people's person. I've always helped people and my results were so transformative. And the experience that I had, I wanted to share it with everyone else. Mm. And I think that's where it basically started. Look, we spent about two and a half years, three years in research. So this is like in 2016, 2017. So, correct. So I had her in 2016, um, at the end of 2016, and sort of 2017, 2018, we were researching nonstop. We were looking for the exact same source, if not better. Yeah. Um, we tried and tested every sort of local brand. It's incredible because all I can see is your hair and it's so like... Thank you. And there's lots of new hair, That's as you can awesome, see. yeah. So it's, it's no, almost it's... a little bit annoying though, I won't lie. <laughs> <laughs> There's too much, my product works yeah, too it's well. It's too good, like you've got to try flatten these little flyaways that keep popping up from everywhere. But um, but I, I, love, I love the fact that it's like, and I think this goes back to what I said earlier, it's like you live your brand and it's, you were faced with like a challenge. Absolutely. You tried other routes to solve the challenge. All of them led to, i.e. a dead end, right? And then it was almost like this last chance, this one thing. And it's, it goes back to word of mouth, right? Someone said, you've got to try this. And then through that, you knew that how many other people have gone through these, these routes well, that have same, led to dead exactly. ends and they don't know about this. And it goes back to what we were saying off camera is there's this missing education. There's this gap that people don't necessarily understand. Like I didn't necessarily understand that you get different types of collagen right? And how your body also produces different types of collagen. Is that correct Absolutely. to me saying? And like you need to find the right type for you. Absolutely. And I think that's where, you know, people, as you said, they lack that education. Mm. You know, we spent, I mean, I literally 
treated this as like a, uni a university project, yeah. you know? So I really spent about, as I said, two and a half years in just researching because I also didn't want to bring something out that was not backed by science, was not backed by clinical trials. And through my research, I mean, I found there was over 20 double-blinded placebo trials, controlled trials, just alone on collagen, and probably over, jeez, over 30,000 lectures and, um, you know, trials that, that were never published. Mm. I mean, I, I really went into depth, and I suppose through all of that was where we met our suppliers. Um, and we use the world leaders in hydrolyzation in France. Um, and that was basically the turning point where I knew this is exactly the route I want to go in. Um, I want to focus on ingestibles because I truly believe that what you eat is no. what you are. And, you know, as I mentioned to you earlier, you know, topically and coming from a skincare background, I know firsthand that what you apply on your skin only reaches 3% of the dermis. But think of it even in your normal day-to-day -day food. You know, what you're putting in is, is what you're getting out. Yeah. So what you're ingesting has the ability to work 97% deeper. Sure. Amazing. And that's how it basically started. Um, and you have the hair to prove it. And I've got the hair to prove it. <laughs> and I've got the before photos. Yeah. Um, and then I hit sort of a, a phase two with the hair loss because I had my second child um, in 2018. Um, this time around, I was already trialing our collagen so I didn't have as much hair loss but soon after her I had precancerous cells in my cervix oh my word my cervical so I had to have that removed and obviously going through um, anesthetic it plays a huge role in your body and I experienced hair loss from that so I think that's when we started um, with the targeted treatments you know and I started um formulating deeply rooted yeah. so all our products go under about two years of trialing and testing and formulating some don't even make it to market it's just it is, is what right, it is right. if, it's not, if it doesn't work, absolutely so if it doesn't it meet our standards we're not interested in launching it and you know it is the longer way but we're really there for the credibility of the product and we want to make sure that what we're offering our customers is is, is the benefits that they're hoping to achieve because I was sick of spending money and not, you know, it was just empty promises. Mm. You know, it was, it was based on good marketing and influences at that time. And I think, you know, 2016, 2017, you know, it wasn't sort of as controlled as what influencing is now. You know, people have freedom of speech and if they don't like something, they're going to say it. I don't, this is not for mm. me. But back then, I think if any influencer got a press drop, it was the best product out there. Yeah. You do, you are a normal person and you know, you see what they're posting, you go, well, let me try this now, let me try that. And it was just empty promises and I didn't want to be just another brand. Yeah. I wanted to be that brand, which what we say is what you're going to get. And I think that's something we pride ourselves in is being South Africa's first science back and clinical child ingestible beauty brand. Well, well done to you. Thank I think you. it's, I think it's testament again to you and having done the research for this for this conversation like what's really nice is to see you as your own influencer for your own product and like i think it goes to your set of values mm -hmm. that you're not going to put your name behind something that isn't going to work correct because you know that there's other women and men out there that are suffering from either hair loss or pigmentation or dark marks or whatever it is whatever. especially with hair loss yeah. i mean you mentioned hair loss now globally hair loss affects or thinning of hair. It's affecting me right now. I'll tell well, you that it much. affects 80% <laughs> globally of men and 50%. That's half the population of females. Really? Correct. And it's just, it's, it's probably a bigger concern than pigmentation and acne. Because it's, I think it's like so deeply rooted. <laughs> Excuse the pun. <laughs> it's, well said. <laughs> thanks. I'm in marketing. Yes, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's almost like a, maybe ego is the wrong word for it but it's like it's just something that represents you and like i mean i remember when i was younger i've had man bun before and long long hair so that this guy literally two days ago shaved it off shaved it off wow are you brave yeah and that's and that's the thing you got to get to is like you get to that point where this is not looking so good so i just need to bite the bullet to just get oh, rid of it i think he is 
ultimately, especially in females, yeah. your hair is your crown. Mm. And you know, it, well it really said. does sort of outline your features. I mean, even certain cultures, you know, they, they're all about hair. Yeah. So you, look, I can tell you firsthand. I mean, when I lost my hair after my first pregnancy, my confidence dropped. When I say Imagine. dropped, dropped. Um, I remember I was crying every day. My brains were getting blocked. Thank God my husband owns a um, household detergents. What do you mean um, your brains were getting blocked? My drains. Oh, your drains. <laughs> no, definitely not my brains. Oh, your no, brains. my brains are okay. Your my brain, brain is okay. Is, your drains. For now, my brain's okay. okay. Maybe I should formulate something for like <laughs> <laughs> brain. Anti-brain blocker. Yes, I got you. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's why we have captions on these things yeah, in the podcast. Yeah, we need that. Drains. Drains. Put it in big. Absolutely. So thank God he owns a um, company that manufactures household detergents. Because okay. I was literally shoving um, acid and drain cleaner down the drains to dissolve the amount of hair that sure. was just falling out. That's crazy. It was the biggest shock of my life. And I think really it, it, it took a huge toll on my confidence. Yeah. So ultimately, I think I know what people feel when they start seeing it. And with COVID, I'm sure you're aware, there was a lot of people experiencing more hair loss with post-COVID hair loss. Um, yeah, because of the stress, the anxiety levels, everything just absolutely. shot up. Absolutely. So it's a huge concern and probably one of the biggest and fastest growing categories, um, not just in ingestible beauties, but in topical. It is probably leading the way at the moment. Mm. So now you're not only a, a very um, studious um, person, having like studied a lot of these things, not only very much a fitness person, mm -hmm. not only an entrepreneur, you're also a mother, I am. right? Which which has led to this opportunity, right? Direct correlation is Absolutely. Gabby's born, hair loss, losing confidence. So I should just ultimately leave the business for her. No, no well, she started it. Yeah, you, <laughs> she's going to get it. just give it to her. She's going to get it. But it's like, now, how do you manage to juggle all of these different things? And obviously being a mother is is a job in itself like we discussed it is. and then running this business is it's also its job and you are the face of the business so you have to almost put more and more effort Correct. into it so like how do you find that that equilibrium to have that 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 home life as a and i and i, I wanted to ask you this earlier mm. it's like do you want me to say female entrepreneur or is it okay just to say entrepreneur because that's all you are you Correct. are a business person entrepreneur. yeah that's it that's what you're doing so like for me i always I personally think it's redundant to say female entrepreneur. You are an entrepreneur. I agree with you. Regardless of, of your, your gender, you are an entrepreneur. You're starting a business, you're running a business. And yes, maybe that distinction gives you different challenges, which is maybe what I'm trying to allude to. Mm -hmm. But how do you how do you work in that balance? And do you have a balance? Like is it is it I wouldn't say I mastered yes, okay. the balance. I don't think you can ever master it. You know, certain things happen during the day that are just out of your control. But one thing I can say is you need a great support system. When they say it takes a village, it truly does. It takes a village. Um, and I'm very blessed that I have an amazing support system. My husband is extremely hands-on. So if I'm not there, he'll jump in and he'll be both mom and dad figure. Um, and vice versa. If mm. he's not there, you know, and it's my turn, I jump in. But um, family, family is it's probably the biggest blessing you can have. My parents jump in, Greg's parents jump in, and they can, you know, if we're not there for the kids, they will really quickly become that figure. Um, and so with that, having said that, I've had to learn early, you know, we opened up, we launched in COVID, mm. um, in the pandemic. And obviously I had the kids at home and um, you, you kind of realize that with this on and off, I wasn't able to always be solely hands-on on the business. When we started, it, everything was me. You know, you, you've you got to know every part of your business, but you've got to realize that you've got to build a team because ultimately it's teamwork. There's no I in team. And I am blessed in saying that I've got an incredible team. Um, we've got amazing staff um, and they, they share equal passion for the brand. They believe in the brand. They live the brand. Um, you know, if, if they didn't, they wouldn't be there. Mm. And so they are very supportive and they are quick to jump in and help out and carry their weight through. 
Um, and as I said to you, you know, in the early days, I sort of, I wanted to control everything. Um, I was the person replying to customers if they had questions or anything, I'd be that person. So I knew the ins and outs of everything from day one, but I had to realize very quickly that this is not going to be a success. Can't scale, cannot scale. If I don't have help. Mm. And I do, I've got a great support system. You know, our office team is amazing. Our, our, our labs are incredible. Our team out in Europe is phenomenal. They, you know, they're always sort of informing us of, you know, new ingredients that have all pay, are patent waiting and, and have clinical trials. And, you know, could, you, could we do something with this? So we've got a team there, we've got a team here. We've got scientists here as well, nutritionists that work Continuous alongside Continuous innovation us. is so important for, Absolutely. for a product like this. So it's space. really to find that medium, that happy balance is, is, is purely done by having that support system and also knowing that, you know, when you are at work and you can't, and you do, you miss, you miss quite a few things that happen in your kid's life. But, you know, ultimately, you know, you're doing it for them. You know, everything you do today is for them. And I think Gabby's at an age now where she didn't really understand it when we just launched, but she's now at that age where she understands and she knows, look, mommy can't be here because mm. work comes first, not because I want it to be, but because it's doing things for them. And again, when you are with the children and it's, you know, dinner time, you are, you put work aside and you are there. You are there, you are living in the moment with them and you're giving them the full attention and it's now their time with you. So I think the only thing I can say is you, you need a really great support system. You need a team. You need, you need to have that help. You can't do it solely. So that's how I find balance. Um, Greg works with me as well, and I work with him. He has his own business. So, you know, we run Revive, we run his business yeah. too. And um, we just we carry the weight. Correct. Yeah. And we carry the weight together. And like I say, you, you can't do it without that village. 100%. So... Your, your message or your lesson or your learning is to any entrepreneur that has got a startup, because effectively you're still very much in the startup stage, who is also a parent. Absolutely. It's about surrounding yourself with not only family that are going to be there to support you through Correct. anything that you do, but identifying the key stakeholders from within your business. They're going to be able to pick up and drive the brand, whatever the message is, whatever the values are, whatever the beliefs. Correct. They've Without got to have the same beliefs as you. Yeah. And if you are not there, you need to know that they are capable of making a decision on behalf of yours. And that's the trust and factor, right? Yes. It's got to be trust within your product and trust within yourself. Yes, as I said, they've got to believe in the brand mm. 100%. I always feel that if you believe in something, you're going to give it your all. I believe solely in my brand. Um, like I said, I believe it's, it's the best. And, and I'm going to live by that. It gives me the passion and the drive. I love, eat, sleep, revive. I also love, eat, sleep, my kids. But, I mean, revive is ultimately there to, to keep me busy, mm. first of all. Yeah. It's my passion. It's what I love to do. But like I keep saying, you know, it's, it's there for a purpose. And it's there to be able to one day give my kids the opportunities I had and I was fortunate enough to have that my parents gave me. Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing that you want to do as a parent, right? Is you need to, if not exceed those expectations. Absolutely. Or at least match. And uh, I mean, I know we, we had a conversation mm -hmm. around this resonated quite strongly in, in the sense of my personal experience with my father was that he wasn't around much because he was working overseas. And I think as a child, when you're, I don't know, must have been 11 when he left, that's he did young. come back very young it's young but it's like you don't you just know that he's not there for that sports game he's not there to watch you play it's hard you know and it is difficult because you at that time when you're that young obviously naive you don't realize that dad's a way to make money to support the family to pay for bills to build a foundation or a setup for you to go to a good school for you to go to and get a university Correct. for you to be privileged enough to get a car you know like I, those things you don't realize until you get a little bit older and you're like wow What's my that? father had to sacrifice so much for his family Correct. and now do i only have that not now come like after when <laughs> i grew up it was yesterday i realized <laughs> um but it's like you you it's only with age do you understand like wow that is a sacrifice that is bigger than itself 
and maybe at the time I didn't always show appreciation for it because I didn't Clarice, understand it. But you it. never knew none the wiser. No, of course. I didn't understand it. Also, I think in today's world, it's it's a lot more different. Mm. You know, we, I think from years ago to now, I think things have changed so much. And I think it's, I think we're seeing more sort of both-sided parents, you know, bringing the income into the house because things are so much more expensive. And... Life is really difficult at the moment. It's you know, hard. it's everything is just it, it just keeps going up, and so I think it's very important now for both sides of the parents to work and bring something to the table, mm. which very makes true. it hard on the kids. Yeah, because they have less time to mm. spend with them, and it's like you said, it's not because you prioritizing no. business ahead of them because you don't love them. It's because you have to do that because you love them. Correct. It's purely because yeah. we love them. Mm. It's very hard. So sometimes mom guilt kicks in. But mom guilt. Mom guilt. What is it's that? a thing. It's, it's a, a thing. real, real thing. It's where you honestly feel guilty for not being present. But I, again, learned quite quickly that I need to put that side of the emotions aside. And when I am with the kids, it's their time. Mm. It's their time and I'm, I'm there. I'm present and it's all the attention on them. And obviously when they're at school or, you know, bedtime, I can go back to being the business woman. Yes. That's, you know, that's how we basically juggle it around. And I mean, talking on mom's guilt. So for you, it's about just being able to separate those boxes. Correct. And, and also, find... so I think when we spoke yesterday, I'd mentioned my parents, they, um, they also, they dedicated their life to work in order to be able to give my brother and I a good start to life. And honestly, there was nothing that we were short of. Um, you know, we got the good schooling. Mm. And as you mentioned, you know, we were fortunate enough to get a car. Um, but one thing I recall as as a child was my parents weren't often, or they couldn't be at every sports game, as you mentioned, or at every show jumping show. Recital. They, they couldn't be there. They just parent Absolutely. Night. And I think, you know, sort of, that was one thing that always sort of ate me inside. And I said, that would never be me with my kids. You know, I will always be there. And I will be at every single concert practice. And I will be at every single event. And I will be at your sports days. And obviously I wasn't. And I think that kind of sunk in a lot harder. Mm. And that guilt and the feeling that I had as a kid sort of started repeating. And that's when I realized that means you got to you got to separate the two now you got to understand that there's certain more um, important events that you've got to be at yeah and you're going to be present at those. those you're going to pri- correct and so you're going to be present there and as for the rest a guardian figure is going to have to step in and they're okay with it they're actually quite get, like excited when granny comes through and you know she's watching the ballet or she's watching the gymnastics and it's not me every single time yeah. so it's worked out quite well but it's it took a while to to let that go yeah to just internalize that and just feel it's not your fault absolutely at the end of the day because you're building something like you said maybe gabby's gonna get it yeah maybe and that's it and the only way she gets that is if you put in the time and the effort and the work now for it to be because i mean smes you're you're coming up to that five year mm-hmm. mark right not mm-hmm. many get past that then Correct. it's the eight year mark then it's the 10 year mark and then it's a 15 and once it gets to those stages then there's going to be some you know ability to have that freedom and that time to go and do Will they all i hope well especially if you're always the face of the brand no, like that's the know. thing it's like I think for me, like if we were to do a like a creative workshop, mm-hmm. which we do do at Dark Matter, it would be trying to find a way in phased approach of, okay, how do we leverage you as the brand continuously now? But there also needs to be a point in which you need to de- deviate from mm-hmm. it because you can't always be there. Same right. thing as you can't always go to your children's sporting events or horse jumping or parents even. Exactly. There's going to be selective things that you can only do. And if it anchors too much on you, then there's a whole different type of stress. Because I think in any business, there's like a, there's that like, that ceiling to what it can achieve. Mm -hmm. And then you need to almost evolve it again to get to that next level. And maybe that comes in the way and how you were saying in Japan, they're like giving you collagen as a side element. They really do. Element, you know, like how do you. So, I mean, it's it's crazy. And I'm seeing it more and more in more European uh, countries as well. You know, you'll go for a cup of coffee and, you know, 
Would you like an extra shot of collagen? Croissant, collagen. Correct. You go <laughs> and you have like your it? meal. Would you like your soup with a shot of <laughs> collagen in it? Oh, okay. How did you know? Yeah. <laughs> You're okay. talking is my language. Is it that obvious? Yeah. Or is it just, you know, can you start seeing it? <laughs> yeah. You know, like it's, it really is. It's and, and again, I can't stress enough that, you know, especially with the ingestible sector, it's, it's really only starting to to show some legs now. You know, it's it's there is so much potential in this in this specific industry. What is your advice to any consumers who are watching this that want to get some ingestible collagen products? Like, what would you say for them to look out for? In the collagen specifically, I think I think start off with collagen specifically, and then maybe in a general sense, what are the key things that they should know about? So definitely do your research. I think it's very important to do your research um, and understand that not all collagen is created equally. Um, it really does differ dramatically, and there is a few things you need to look for. And don't be scared to ask questions. Reach out to everybody. Go onto a brand that you're interested in, whether it be Revive even, and ask them these questions. What is your molecular weight of your collagen? So for us, it's very important. That is probably the most important thing that you will look at when choosing a collagen mm. brand is its molecular weight. So to give you an example, we take our raws from about 300,000 Daltons right down to below 2,000 Daltons. What's a Dalton? A Dalton is a measure of the actual product. So it's a unit measure of, okay. of, of sort of, of the active. Okay, cool. Um, so the lower the molecular weight, the higher the absorption rate, the higher the bioavailability is and the greater the benefits will be or, you know, um, the, the results. So ask, don't be afraid to ask questions. Ask them, what is your molecular weight? We have the lowest molecular weight worldwide at this point that we know of. Excellent. Um, so we know that we have an absorption rate above 95%. And then you want to discuss what type of collagen it is. There is so many types of collagen. You have different types of collagen in your body, but your body's predominantly made up of type 1, 2, and 3. Um, so you need to see what is it that you're looking at achieving from the collagen. So again, hydrolyzation, very important. Is your collagen hydrolyzed? If it's not hydrolyzed, then it has not been broken down into that small molecular weight. And, and again, the weight can be correct. Anything from two and a half. Most of our international brands are lying at about two and a half to 5,000 Daltons, where we, as I mentioned, are just below 2,000 Daltons. Sure. So that is probably the key factor to look at, and then the type of collagen. So um, if you're looking for a product that's going to assist with anti-aging, that is a powerhouse for anti-aging and is related to your skin, your hair, your nails, Ocean Glow would be your choice. Okay. Um, Ocean Glow is also in comparison to any other type of collagen. We get porcine, which is made out of pork. You get bovine which is made out Cow. of cattle okay, um, so. and then you get chicken chicken cartilage which is um, extracted from the neck of chicken which is a pure type 2 collagen peptide which is really good for the joints type 2 is really only just joints so with this is this made from fish or is this made from like so this is actually made from sustainably sourced fish okay. but we use the skin of the fish that would have otherwise been discarded by the hospitality trade um, and we use so four you're almost different. Like upcycling, recycling, absolutely. Reusing. So we are very much for looking after the earth and um, you know making sure that we do things respectfully towards our earth and leave as little um, carbon footprint as possible. So we use four different species of fish, um, and it's farmed fish um, in Europe, you know, open water farm fish. And the reason we use four different species is so that we don't ever apply too much pressure on one species. Uh, to overproduce and Correct. overpopulate. Okay. Um, and, you know, originally when we started um, with our suppliers, we, we were actually sourcing um, fish from the sea, from the aquatic waters. And everyone, and there's a big trend now about, oh, but it's all pure and, you know, it comes straight from the sea. But... In fact, you're only just destroying the ocean. You know, you're putting so much pressure on one species. That ecology to correct. keep producing because absolutely, now and also, you know, sure. once you do freshwater farming in Europe, they, the, the amount of effort that goes into it in testing, you know, the waters test it, so you know that it's, you know. So there's almost like a level of consistency correct. across it. Correct. So we I have guess full traceability from start. Full traceability. Full traceability. With all our products from start to finish. So that's like a report coming back. Saying, absolutely. So we we know everything about our products but we use the skin of the fish 
And as I mentioned, four different types of fish, it puts less pressure on one species of fish. Mm. But also the reason we've done that is because we use that to build up a very specific amino acid composition, um, which is what basically gives you your clinical results. Amazing. So that's why we've done it. The business person you are, it's not just built on, I want to make a cool product. It's I want to build a product that I understand deeply yes. by creating something that is actually going to work inherently beyond it being something for the person, but for the overall environment in which I'm making it. Correct. And it makes me, and I don't know when I mention this, see, I feel like I forget if things are on camera or not. <laughs> I'm speaking I'm like, did I record this in a podcast? But it's like the... Um, I'll be I'll be butchering his name if I try to say it, but the creator of Patagonia, very much aware that his business is reliant on the environment and nature Correct. and going out and hiking and climbing and experiencing it. So that's why he made such a push for creating like funds to save ecology Correct. and create you know that's why most of his money has been given to these these funds to actually preserve environments because if that environment doesn't sustain there wouldn't be any need to buy Patagonia clothing to go and explore it. Well, the same goes for us. We hope you're enjoying the episode so far. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Dark Matter YouTube channel. The more subscribers, the more awesome content we can produce and launch for you to enjoy. That's all. Now back to the conversation. I think it's it's a super interesting, like there's only so much research I, I could do and now I'm hearing all these additional things that come yeah. out from it. And I think that's, I think why I love having this like platform and this medium is I love conversing with people and talking to people. And then it's until you speak to people, you don't realize what lessons and things that they've gone through that have got them to where they are today. Absolutely, you know? and that you can actually learn from. Because at the end of the day, I learn so much just from being here with you. Mm. Um, you know, if you keep a closed book, oh, you, you're never, never going to evolve. Yeah. No. You know, exactly. And I think evolution is a, is a fundamental thing. But I, what I want to bring it back to is if you can cast your mind to your first job, right? Mm -hmm. What is the one lesson that you learned from that job that you still practice today? Discipline. Discipline. Love that answer. Discipline. Amazing. Discipline. So I, as I mentioned to you, I worked in a spa, um, worked crazy hours. The pay was never great, but the discipline was there. And I had a boss who... If she said you had to be in at six o'clock, you had to be in at six o'clock. And mm. so from a very young age, like I said to you, I show jumped, I made all the sacrifices to be able to get to work at a certain time, you know, finish work at a certain time and perform at my best. It took a lot of discipline. You know, when you're a youngster, because I started young, when you're a youngster, you want to jaw and you want to be living your best life. And I think we, as youngsters, lack discipline and that was something that was embedded in me from a very early age was discipline and I think that's why I've got so much drive and so much focus um, in everything I do is because I've got that discipline to be able to carry it out so yeah. discipline is something that that I'll carry with me for the rest of my life that's huge I think a lot of I think a lot of um, the generation growing up I don't think they understand the short time the the, the short term <laughs> sacrifice mm -hmm. can lead to the long-term reward correct and that's something like that's a lesson that i've only learned recently in the last you know two to three years is that like what you do today will have the far-reaching impacts correct. for your tomorrow it's the uh, well it's the outcome it's yeah. that leads to what your outcome will be mm. you've got to put effort in in order to achieve and you've got to be you've got to be brave to do it i think a lot of people are scared they're scared, regardless of anything they do, they're scared to open up that business, they're scared to take that leap of faith. But fear should be your biggest driver. Mm. Um, but like you say, you know, I think kids don't realize, ugh, almost feel like children these days have it far more easier than what we did. But I think every generation says that. Yeah, I really yeah. do believe that though. But that's why it's generational, because every yes, generation says, ah, you didn't have it as exactly, hard as we did. Exactly, exactly. But I do believe that. I mean, I said to the girls, everything is so readily available to them, where it wasn't to us, you know. Yeah. You want to research anything, you've got an iPad, you've got oh, Google. Yeah. We wanted to research something, mm. we went into a library and got an encyclopedia out mm. and, you know, researched it. Um, so I think discipline. Discipline is something that will always be with me and it's something that I try and teach my girls to. Brilliant. Focus, discipline, just, just 
thriving, that discipline. I want to bring it back to what you just said, though. What was your fear that was maybe holding you back at the beginning of launching with the, Re- the Revive Lab? I think you always have fear that, you know, people are going to reject your product. They're not going to believe in your product or believe in your service or mm. believe in your business the way you do. You know, now you've laid out everything you have. You know, we Revive was self-funded. You know, it's it's... I can thank my husband for it. I mean, he believed in my crazy idea. He saw what a change it was for me. And so, you know, he was that, that push. And he still is. He's, he's that push for all my crazy ideas. But um, I think fear, fear of not being good enough, it's, it's always at the back of your head. But you, you can't let that happen. Yeah. You know, you've got to put those feelers out. And I, I've always said that if I believe in something wholeheartedly, and, and, and I swear by it. And I really, I believe everything about our products because I've felt them, I've seen them work and I've seen now what a transformative effect it has on other people. And, and I'm all about being able to help somebody. Um, oh, this brand just makes my heart glow now. I can see, I can see. <laughs> It's, it's touched the nerve there. Yeah, it really, really has. But I believe if you have all that belief in your brand, you, you will come, take it. You can get to, others to believe in it too. Correct. And you'll yeah. take it to that next level. You just have to believe in your brand and in yourself. If you've got the drive, if you've got the discipline, you, you'll get there. You'll get there. Don't be scared. Don't let fear of failure stop feed. You. On, yeah, don't yeah. let it stop you. Don't let it feed on your emotions. Rather see it as... As your biggest successful push. Yeah. I Treat it you. that way and and you can soar the highest mountains. I love that. I, I mean, a motto that or mantra I lived by in 2020 was just start. Correct. Just, just start. start. Just start. Just start. What's the idea? Just start. And I think... You'll figure it... Yeah, it's not going to be it perfect. It's not going to be... It's never It's not going to be brilliant at the beginning. And don't think you're not going to make mistakes. Yeah. Wow, do you make mistakes? You make big mistakes. Yeah. But like I said to you, the mistakes is what opens the doors for the future. Yeah, you learn from those mistakes, absolutely, and then something else sparks up and and you carry on again. Yeah. I so think that. I agree with you. Often people are like, well, how do I just start? Just start. Just start. Launch it, do something, you know. Even if you launch it now and it's not perfect, you can evolve with your brand. Mm. So many brands have rebranded. So many brands have changed logos. You can figure that out as you go. Yeah. And it goes back to what you were saying earlier. is like listen to the community that you have got. Correct. Hear what they want, what they need, and then you build something around that. Correct. And it just starts by starting. We'll be very consumer driven, as I said to you. That's exactly how. Do you how. think every business needs to be today? I do. I think you've got to listen to your consumer. And is the best way to do that through social media? Or how would you do that? I think social media today plays a huge role. It really does. I mean, you can get so much information out of your audience. So much. I mean, from new product launches or ideas to flavors that they like. You know, are they capture related people or are they not? Anything you want to gain from social media, you can. It's almost like you're doing a constant study. Absolutely. So you're doing that like litmus test of, okay, cool. Well, well it's the way, go- it's, well, it's the it's way. the poll. <laughs> yes, but it's also the way, um, what is it? Instagram with, with your algorithm. Mm. I mean, they're playing us. Yeah. It's exactly the same way. So you can use it. It's a very good business tool. I, and I believe every single business should be on social media and have sort of that coverage on social media. You have the opportunity now to extend your business and your reach so much more further. Mm. Whereas before, I think it was very hard. Yeah. You know, you didn't have access to that. A lot of barriers to entry. Absolutely. Traditional marketing, having to have a billboard, a TVC, a radio. Or be in a store. Yeah, having a, having a brick and mortar. I mean, I'm not a store person yeah. at all. I hate going to the shops now. I, I'm, I love online. I want to ask you another question. Obviously, it took us a while to get you to sit in this chair. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. we, we, we went through a few uh, ups and downs, but I'm so glad we did find oh, the opportunity to. This has been amazing. And I'm glad you've enjoyed it. I've thoroughly really enjoyed really it. I really, really have. Like, I don't want to go home now. Oh, I could we just can, carry hey, on can we speaking? keep going, Shannon? <laughs> <laughs> I feel oh, like yeah. I'm one of the family now. <laughs> um, but I want to ask you, when you heard, like when we asked you to be on the show and we asked you about blood, sweat and ideas, like what thought came to mind? Like what, what did that trigger for you? The first thing that I thought of was business. I knew immediately that this was something about business. But blood, sweat and ideas was, 
it resonated with me because I thought back to the early days of starting Revive. It was exactly that. There was blood. Well, the ideas came in and then the blood and the sweat and the tears came in after. Yeah. Um, and so it was actually a really nice way that you guys put it. Um, I could resonate to it and it, 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 it is. When you are starting a brand, it's daunting. As I said, you, you worry, is it gonna work? Is it mm. not gonna work? Um, you know, and I think, especially something like ingestibles, you know, there's still a lot of people, and especially in South Africa, they, they don't understand the concept behind ingestible beauties. And so they still believe that it's pseudoscience. Sure. Because there's not enough brands locally that educate the consumer no, it's all the um, topical. Correct. Right. So it's, it's very, very scary. And I remember a lot of things went wrong in the beginning. And, you know, when we launched, as I mentioned to you, we launched uh, while we were in that pandemic and they weren't allowing any imports in. And so, you know, it was out of our control, but we launched later than we had hoped. And it was a lot of blood, sweat and tears. It really <laughs> was. And let me tell you, it's still a lot of blood, sweat and tears. Like we, oh, I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. I don't right? think it's going to stop. I mean, like I said to you, we've made many mistakes, but we've learned from those mistakes, and you know, we've dealt with delays, especially mm. now with you know everything that's going. And those, I mean, that's the thing, right? Those are the challenges that any South African business will have to contend with. And I mm -hmm. think this was the reason for why we created this: is we want to hear from South African entrepreneurs Correct. working in the South African environment and how they go about building brands and building products and leveraging social media and communicating with their communities to like make the best possible use of what they have, like mm -hmm. sweating what they have to sell to their audience and, and to grow a, a fruitful you know, business. And that's what more South Africa needs. We need more entrepreneurs taking the risk and not letting the fear stop them from building something. Couldn't agree with you Which I more. love what you've done. No, I couldn't agree with you more. We like to end each show with asking our guests what question they would like to ask the next person in the seat. So what's your question for our next guest? Will it be business related? It can be anything you want. It can be like, what's your, what's your beauty routine? What would you like to ask? What is their biggest concern? Specific to their industry. Yeah, specific to their industry, specific to them. What okay. what is their biggest concern? Like, okay, I like that. I like that question. Yeah, it could just be an open question. It could be about skin too. Yeah, you know? well, I'll weave it into it. Yeah, please, by all means, you'll give me some insiders. Yeah, information. that's it. Look, that's no, what we're getting, I need. We're we getting need insights that from the podcast. Absolutely, you know. I love that. We're all about that. We want we want the consumers' insight inside info <laughs> that's exactly it and that's why i got the inside info from you today you got the scoop i got the full-on <laughs> scoop not just a scoop of collagen <laughs> but nina thank you so much for being oh, an excellent guest on thank you Blood, for Sweat, having me i can't actually tell you how much fun i had this I know. has been amazing it is more As fun than people you, think I it's gonna think be i think i'm not gonna leave I think i'm gonna become <laughs> part of the family here that's exactly i'm more than happy to stay but what we'll have to do is get you back another time you know let's let's keep tabs on what you do and i think just from my side, it's been great to hear your side of the story of Thank you. how this product, obviously it's in an industry and a space that's obviously growing. Correct. But the need for consumers to educate themselves on what they actually need to use. Correct. And also like the challenges of not just being these different hats that you wear of being, you know, a, a, a student, being a mother, being an entrepreneur. But it's like how you find that balance, not that you've mastered it. No, I don't think you can ever master it. And I you, keep saying that. And, and keep you... keep refining it, right? Correct. But it's just so cool to hear this narrative from yourself. And what I really did enjoy is how this product was born out of a personal challenge. Correct. And wanting to find something else. And I think there's a lot of... Um, inspiration for anyone that is listening to this anyone that is wanting to start a uh it's not a podcast starting a business <laughs> all um, that <laughs> all that yeah all that but it's like if you can find something that you inherently will always believe in and always go back to that pain point mm -hmm. that is going to be your driving force to continue of to course. deliver and reach out and aspire to be more and i think that for me is like a great message for everyone so thank you so much for being on the thank podcast thank you so much for having me i've had the best afternoon ever like it's awesome. been absolutely amazing and thank you for giving me the opportunity pleasure i look forward to the next one <laughs> welcome back <laughs> yay that's a wrap if you've made it this far you are an absolute legend on behalf of everyone that works at dark matter 
I thank you for your time and attention. Stay tuned for the next episode of Blood, Sweat and Ideas.